Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. My name is Manny, and I'm here with... My name is Michael Sayre, and I was the design lead on Paizo's new book, Guns and Gears, for the second edition of the Pathfinder role-playing game. And that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so how would you describe Guns and Gears exactly? Uh, so Guns and Gears is a book that brings clockwork and kind of steampunk themed technology as well as firearms and other black powder weapons into the game world of pathfinder second edition um and one thing that was very important to us as we were creating this book was uh you know you and i had a little bit of a conversation in the pre-warm-up about how some people don't like guns as much in their fantasy other people it's like yeah they have to be there it's not really complete without them uh, and so it was very important to us as we were going through making this book, ordering the art, creating the mechanical options and stuff, that it feel like a fantasy game, that it not be a new genre that we're grafting on, but rather that it be an expansion of the genre. It, it, it feels like that Galarian, and now I'm, I'm very new to uh, second edition Pathfinder, and I'm enjoying what I'm finding so far. And it looks like Galarian is not your typical fantasy setting. It looks like it could be anything to anyone. Is that what Galarian is, would you say? A kind of a, a mix of different themes? Yeah, yeah. I've heard people call it, you know, a kitchen sink setting. Uh, and that's and, and that's fairly accurate. You know, there's a, a corner of the world called the Shackles where we have pirates and pirate ships uh, and, and everything like that. There's another piece of the world called the Saga Lands where we have Vikings who, you know, kill dragons to claim their kingship. Uh, and, and so uh, there's even a part of the world where we have a crashed spaceship that spews out killer robots from time to time, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's definitely a very, very big world. It's funny when I hear people say, like, that's not fantasy. Uh, because growing up, you know, I remember some of the first fantasy influences I had were games like uh, Shining Force and Fantasy Star, which I would very much categorize as fantasy, but also if somebody else said, you know, actually those are sci-fi, well, you probably got a point. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so before we talk more about the themes and the weapons in this book, this book introduces two new classes. Uh, what can you tell us about those two classes? Uh, so the two new classes are the inventor and the gunslinger. Uh, the inventor is this innovative character who you're kind of defined by your primary invent, uh, invention. You have this innovation that is like your big thing, this invention that only you have accomplished and only you know how to use. And that could be like a big clockwork weapon with all kinds of pulleys and abilities that a normal weapon wouldn't have. Or it could be a big suit of steam powered armor that, you know, gives you uh, a whole bunch of additional defensive benefits, or it could actually be a construct companion who can help you out, who can take on different forms for you, who could even maybe be your mount that you ride around in battle. Um, and and the class itself is all about innovations. Uh, it's got feats for things like whipping out gadgets on the fly, you know, like, hey, everybody, how are we going to get over this obstacle? Well, give me a couple of minutes here, and I'm going to whip up some blast boots, and we'll all rocket jump over to the next area, uh, you know. Um, and then the inventor, uh, the gunslinger is pretty straightforward, right? It uses guns. It uses guns better than anybody else in the game. It has everything from, you know, like kind of the standard classics, like I want to duck behind cover and reload as one action so I can do this thing really efficiently and effectively that's going to set me up even better for the next thing I do. Uh, and, and some of the stuff it can do is really kind of crazy and fantastical, taking the, you know, kind of the biggest inspirations from old over-the-top spaghetti westerns and action movies and other things and letting you do that in the game. You know, there's like a black powder boost feat where you can fire your gun off as you run for like a big, you know, uh, boost to your jump effect. So uh, during the play test, people would joke about how it was rocket jumping and they're not, they're not super wrong. <laughs> you know, the inspirations <laughs> definitely have similar roots, if nothing else. <laughs> okay. And I, I heard that you're expanding the, the idea of the constructs as an ancestry. Could you uh, talk about that? Yeah, we have a new ancestry, uh, and in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you know, ancestries are what would be called races in Dungeons & Dragons or earlier editions of the game. You know, uh, the, the baseline game has goblins and elves and dwarves and humans and halflings. Uh, and in Guns and Gears, we introduce automatons. And automatons are like magitech 
constructs, right? They, uh, they're these construct bodies that were built a very long time ago in most cases, and then powered by these cores that contain the souls of a now lost civilization. You know, their greatest scientists and artificers and political minds preserved themselves for all eternity inside of these crystal orbs that power the construct bodies. Uh, and those have some cool abilities. They can do things like uh, store weapons inside their bodies so they can you know, pop a sword out of their hand on the fly or replace an arm entirely with a gun uh, or something like that. And they can transform and uh, they have heritages. Heritages are like this extra little layer of customization that sits on top of an ancestry, right? So if you were a goblin, then you might be a char hide goblin where you, you light yourself on fire a lot. You have kind of a fascination with fire. So you have some fire resistance and stuff. For the automatons, their heritages are more about what purpose was this body built for? Maybe the soul that you inhabit way back when was a sniper who defended uh, you know, the country from incoming threats and stuff. And so you're playing a version of the, uh, the automaton that has an ability to like aim in extra well and has built-in lenses and stuff that allow it to uh, be extra good at that. Uh, or the hunter automatons who can drop to all fours and tend to be a little more like bestial in their uh, construction and appearance, you know? Um, and, and so the, all of the, uh, all of the kind of components like that really lend themselves towards customization. The idea that you are in a body that was purpose built to do a particular thing. And so you will have natural advantages towards doing that thing and then some other cool abilities to kind of riff off of that. What, what sort of a, a equipment or weapons or vehicles uh, can you find exactly? Like, like how much, uh, what can you spoil for us? Yeah. So um, I'm gonna give you just a real quick kind of summation of how the book is structured because that'll influence how I'm talking about this. When we made Guns and Gears, you know, like, like, like we talked about, we knew there are some people who they don't like guns in their fantasy, or it might be the clockwork and some of the wackier steampunk technology that breaks immersion for them, right? And so we actually structured this book in such a way as to make it very, very easy for the GM to kind of pick and choose what elements of the book they want in their campaign, uh, campaign. and for them to be able to turn to the player and say very quickly and easily, you know, like, hey, we're using just the gears section or just the gun section or we've got guns but we don't have the combination weapons which are guns that are fused and built together with a melee weapon like the gun sword right we only have the black powder guns that are like the muskets and uh, the dueling pistol and and that kind of thing um so the gears section is uh the first big section of the book it's where the inventor is it's where the automaton is and it's where all the gadgets and stuff are uh and so it includes a few like really kind of cool quirky weapons there's a backpack ballista uh is one of the weapons in there and you basically can pull a lever on this thing if you've got a free hand and it deploys a big ballista over your shoulder that can fire a, a massive bolt off for you there's the backpack catapult, you know, same idea, slightly different ammo and execution. <laughs> um, uh, and a lot of kind of cool, techier weapons like that, right? Weapons that maybe imply a little bit more um, technology than goes into a, a simple longsword, uh, right? Um, and those are supported by gadgets. And gadgets, um, there's something that an inventor is really good with as a class, but that anybody who, if the GM decides to bring them into the game, can buy, deploy, and you know, kind of use in uh, the manner that they see fit. Um, and those cover um, all kinds of different things. You know, we've got net launchers and wind-up wings uh, are some of the kind of cool technological uh, stuff there. So the wind-up wings are like clockwork wings where you can attach them to a weapon and when you throw the weapon it'll actually fly around and seek a target right um and then we've got things where it's like uh, a cauterizing torch where it's literally just oh you you're taking bleed damage you've got a bleeding wound or i'm gonna bust this bad boy out and seal that right up for you <laughs> Gecko pads. Gecko pads are a really cool gadget so you can whip out. So they, they break down over time, you know, they're consumable, you use them and then they're gone. 
but they're basically a pair of gloves that you build where they've got lots of extra traction on them and big, thick kind of fingers that allow you to climb up walls. Um, and, and I think that's one of the fun things about gadgets is we, we covered a whole really wide array of uh, uses for them. There's the stuff that is really obvious how you're going to use it in combat, like the wind-up wings. There's stuff that is uh, more utility focused, you know, like clockwork disguises or, you know, uh, these other items that maybe help you be mobile or help you do something outside of combat uh, in an exploration environment. Um, and then outside of the, the gadgets, what, what, what someone might still think of as a gadget, but which the game does not define uh, as a gadget, we have these other kind of technological advances that uh, change the, the world a little bit. And we actually talk about how they're changing the world as we present them. So for example, one of those items is there's just a printing press that's in the book, right? And it's way too big. Most adventurers aren't gonna lug a printing press around with them necessarily. But it is a thing that you might interact with in an adventure. And we talk a little bit, not just about where you might bump into a printing press, but how it's actively changing the world of Galarian, how Galarian is growing because of this thing. Um, alongside the printing press, we also have a paper shredder, which adventurers might actually use and bring with them because it has the unique property of destroying any magic that is scribed on what you feed through there. So if you happen to have a trap scroll or a cursed uh you know book of some kind rather than trying to deal with uh navigating it you might just feed that right into the paper shredder and and get that hazard out of there before somebody suffers from it is this book kind of styled similarly to secrets of magic where secrets of magic it's pretty much a collection of of spells but there's also like two classes and philosophy and all this other stuff kind of surrounding it. Would you say Guns of Gear is kind of like formatted the same way, styled the same way? Yeah, um, and and in fact, that's that's probably a very close um, breakdown of of you know kind of the uh, the ratios of things in there. There is there is a lot of lore and there's a lot of flavor and kind of grounding in there. The gun section opens up with kind of this big conversation about where do guns in Galarian come from, right? Which part of the world has guns? And how do they get from that part of the world to other parts of the world, right? You know, what are the trade routes that connect these things? Uh, we even talk a little bit about the differences in how technology has evolved and is evolving in Galarian versus the real world, right? Because we have guns in there that were never necessarily particularly popular in the real world, though they did maybe exist in a little isolated pocket at one point in time. Um, and then we have guns that are kind of a fusion of really old-timey firearm stuff and innovations that maybe dead-ended because in the real world, you know, we don't have magic. We we don't have all of these alternate paths to, to getting to places. And so that means guns are going to grow up very differently in a world that does have magic and does have all of these things going on than they did in ours. And so we talk about, you know, kind of all of that stuff. And everything that is in this book, every mechanic, every weapon, every class and archetype, anything that you can pick as a player there is a part of the book that talks to you about how that fits into the game world, about what your place in the game world might be and how you might have come to have or own or be that particular thing. I know we talked about a few times how that there are probably some people that will, will grumble about guns in a fantasy setting, but there's a lot of people out there that love the idea of guns in a fantasy setting, have no problems with it. But uh, for those that are watching this video and they're, interested in the idea of it, but they don't want to maybe overdo it. They worry about, they don't want to be, it be too much, too close to Starfinder uh, or anything like that, or uh, the balance of, 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 of damage and power. Does, does the book contain any like game master tools to help them balance uh, or so advice to balance the, the amount of weapons or equipment they can use for their, for their games? Yeah, absolutely it does. Um, so one of the things right out the bat is the baseline uh, for firearms in this book is black powder era weapons, right? 
muskets and dueling pistols, coat pistols, these these kind of, uh, you know, if you think of the age of piracy and like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, then you've got a pretty good idea of where we've drawn the line on on these weapons, right? Um, and and so we, we, we've kind of found, and when we did the play test, we actually just asked everybody participating, you know, what do you think about these kind of weapons? And we found that that was a much more comfortable place to have these guns for a lot of people. You know, shotguns, revolvers, uh, more modern weapons really starts to break a much larger portion of the community's kind of sense of immersion, or it, it crosses that line into what doesn't feel like fantasy anymore. Um, but we found that by focusing on these weapons, we really got to kind of the, the sweet spot for that intersection of people who like guns and the type of guns that people still kind of tend to feel like fit in a fantasy world. Um, and like I was saying, we've got a big introduction to the guns chapter that talks about things like, why did we go with these kind of guns? Firearms on modern Galarian is a subsection header. You know, another one is talks about revolvers and World War I era weapons and a few different ways where like, if you want these in your game, how do you get them in your game in a way that's mechanically balanced? And if you just want them to be overpowered, we also mention a few ways to be like, look, you can also just do this and it will be a revolver and it will be as overpowered as you would expect a revolver to be in a fantasy world. We don't recommend it. We offer an alternative that is a balanced alternative, you know, but if that happens to be the thing you want as a GM, we also kind of point you in the direction of how to do that. So. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's good to hear. Um, so I know we, I mentioned setting. We haven't really touched setting yet. I don't want to pass that by because I love talking about cities. Um, so Alkenstar um, is a is a city in this book. Um, Correct. What can you, what can you tell us about that? Uh, so Alkenstar is the gritty city in the Mana Wastes, and this was a nation that grew up in a wasteland created by two warring wizard states. Right. These two archmages, each of whom had, you know, an entire country backing them, went to war, and they just created this wasteland in between their two countries from all of their battles. Magic doesn't work there, uh, or if it does work, it only works sporadically or in certain locations. There's mutants and monsters and magical experiments gone awry. And deep in the heart of the Mana Wastes, there is this ancient dwarven kingdom called Dongan Hold. And once upon a time, a human named Ansel Alkenstar made his way through that horrible monster and mutant infected wasteland and knocked on the gates of Dongan Hold and convinced the king to come have a chat with him. And this led to him creating the Duchy of Alkenstar, this human nation that is powered by human ingenuity and ambition, backed by dwarven patience and skill and forging techniques, right? And so they are the heart of guns in the Inner Sea, which is kind of the primary region of Galarian where most of our adventures are set and where we do a lot of stuff. It's not the only part of Galarian. Galarian is a huge planet, uh, bigger than planet Earth, um, but and with multiple continents and everything. Um, but in the Inner Sea, where, where most of our content has been set up to this point, Alkenstar is the home of guns. It's the place where you go to meet other people who have firearms. If you want to get a gun and you live in the inner sea, you probably make a journey to Alkenstar at some point in time. Um, and it has a big impact on the rest of the world around it. Um, it's, you know, in the northern part of a continent called Garand, which is kind of, I, I hate to say it's like fantasy Africa because I don't feel like that does any of the work that has gone into it justice, but geographically and kind of like, what kind of adventure inspirations you might find to find there beyond that, that's kind of what Garand is. Um, and, and so I do think it's really interesting that uh, Alkenstar is there, you know. Um, it was really fun and exciting when we started talking about, you know, if, if that's where this, uh, this place is set, what do the people look like? It led to us getting one of, I think, the coolest iconic characters we've ever had, the new iconic gunslinger, uh, gunslinger Nalmika Ironsight. Um, is a uh, she's a black woman. She's a dwarf. She's got a big old dwarven scattergun cannon. Um, 
Ron Lundeen wrote her Meet the Iconics, which is kind of the backstory where we tell you who this person is and where they come from. That went up on our website uh, about a week ago. Um, and people have been in love with her ever since. They've been calling her gun mom or shotgun grandma <laughs> because her backstory includes the fact that she's got this big family and adventuring is like her third career. You know, she was a soldier, she was a mother, and then her husband passed away um, from a, you know, wasting illness. And she realized there wasn't anything keeping her there in Donk and Hold anymore. And so she went out into the world to be an adventurer with uh her family's blessing and uh, all of the training and equipment that her service in the military had provided her so oh wow wow and speaking of adventure um i heard that there is in the works uh, uh an adventure path that will that this book will help support that deals with gunslinging down the line is that yeah, so we've got a, we've got a few different adventures actually. Um, in about nine days here on the thirteenth, uh, we've got Headshot the Rot coming out, which is a digital one shot adventure set in Alkenstar, and it comes with pre generated characters, so you can just you know bust it open, play it. It's designed to last about four hours, like a one night adventure with these pre made characters. They're all gunslingers, by the way. It's a full gunslinger party, uh, and you're killing zombies and it's uh, really kind of aimed at all of the best parts of zombie movies, but in a fantasy setting, right? Um, I wrote that as well. Uh, and then we've got um, the Outlaws of Alkenstar AP uh, coming up in the near future uh, after Strength of Thousands. Uh, and that is going to have, um, that is also set in Alkenstar that's got even more material supporting uh, all of the cool guns and other things that we've introduced in Guns and Gears. And it'll allow people to get in and really kind of experience Alkenstar and the surrounding area in one of the most comprehensive ways I think that we've ever done up to this point, including first edition, so... Oh wow! Wow, it was, it was great to know there that Pies was supporting not only the book, but of course the uh, that that city and the setting for for players and everything. That's that's fantastic. Is there anything about the book that I haven't asked about that you wanted to share? Um, so we've got a lot of fun lore in the book. Like we were talking, we talked about Alkenstar, right? But we also talked about things. I was telling you how the world is really big, and while most of it is set in the inner sea, that's not the only part of Galarian, right? So we have these other continents, Arcadia and Tiansha, and we talk a bit about black powder uh, or other firearm traditions that those continents have and what guns look like uh, in those areas. That allowed us to bring in, um, you know, some weapons that are more from kind of the birthplace of firearms, like the... Uh, the classic hand cannon and the fire lance, uh, you know, which came out of uh, Asia and have their own kind of unique style and uh, and tradition in the game. Uh, and then over in Arcadia, uh, it's a little bit inspired by the indigenous peoples of uh, North and South America. And so we have very, very different kind of guns over there. They don't actually have black powder, right? They have magic guns and air pressure guns and this kind of very different tech that grew about from them having kind of a completely different set of minerals, resources, and traditions tied to how they develop their weapons. Um, and you get to read about all of those areas. We cover them all in, uh, in Guns and Gears with uh, maps and... Uh, a lot of high level detail so that these things, even if you don't play in Galarian, they'll give you some great kind of hooks or locations that you can customize and tailor to your campaign and drop in there and make all of these things feel natural and feel like a part of your fantasy world, which was a, a very big goal of this for us. I don't want to overstate the lore though because there is just a ton of crunch in here there is so much if you're a player who wants cool options we've got archetypes we've got all kinds of like wacky and cool and weird or grounded whatever really suits you weapons and uh and options in here um and 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 some of the influences you know really go into uh into all kinds of tropes and genres that are late related to firearms we've got this archetype that is uh, about every third person who I've talked to who sees the book is like, that one, that's my favorite thing from this book where it's called The Unexpected Sharpshooter. And the idea is that 
you're either really, really skilled, but act like you're clumsy, or you're really, really clumsy, but also really, really lucky. So you'll do things like trip and fire your gun and the bullet bounces off a metal pan and skims across a stove, starting a grease fire before it plunks into a water tower, causing it to topple and wipe out a quarter of the town sort of thing. You know, these uh, these big just kind of disaster tropes wrapped up in something that your player can play with at the table and do these, uh, these kind of big event-based um, moves. So, you know, that, that I think that's the thing that I really want to say is it's... Uh, there's so much in this book and we didn't just throw out as much crunch as we could and leave you to figure out how it fits in the game right we spent a really healthy amount of time talking about how to get this to fit in your world and how to understand where the line is for you and then use this book to walk up to that line without stepping over it right so mm -hmm. i uh, i think that's important i think people are really gonna like it whether they want just something a little bit more grounded so their pirates can have a bracer of pistols or something that really goes over the top because, you know, they're a big Final Fantasy player and they want to do just a full-on gun breaker with a gun sword, smacking people and then immediately shooting them with the, the gun portion of the weapon kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I, I finally can now make my um, Dark Tower <laughs> uh, yes. game. Uh, I've been waiting for like a, a gunslinger or uh type of class to come out and i'm glad i'm glad this book is coming out just in time for that idea um but uh but yes michael thank you so much for taking the time to uh uh talk to us about guns and gears uh when will it be out uh so october 13th so we're nine days out right now it's coming up fast um and you can order it online from paizo.com. Uh, it'll also be available from all of your friendly local gaming stores uh, and you know major book retailers and stuff on that date. So wherever it is that you get your gaming supplies, it should be there October 13th. Excellent. Well, viewers, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, let us know what's your favorite uh, weird Western or a Western or a fantasy or just uh, a gun fantasy series. Maybe this is something I don't know about that I would love to read. Um, uh, yes, thank you very much, everyone. Stay safe out there and have a great day.